Welcome to the Lazy Geeks Network. Welcome, everybody, to the Cheap Seats Podcast here on the Lazy Geeks Network. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. Did you forget there for a second? <laughs> it was a little extra extra pause, like, wait, what's my name? What's my name? What's my name? What's my name? <laughs> don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our uh, monthly uh, podcast that we just talk about movies that... Uh, you know, we check out some. Sometimes they're available online. This one we kind of chose mostly because you know this is still January and we're still on the run on the heels of uh, Rogue One, and then of course um, all this Episode Eight and potential Nine news. So what we kind of decided to do was to go back and uh, look at the original Star Wars uh, film, nineteen the nineteen seventy seven film. Uh, also for uh, for those of you that don't know what I mean when I say the original, no, not episode one, episode four. <laughs> OG shit. The OG shit, right. Um, so with that, um, oh, and by the way, uh, I was talking to, I was just telling Adam before the uh, podcast, in the show notes, I'm going to have a link to the uh, original teaser trailer for the original movie. Yeah. And uh, it's... It's so weird. Like you look at it. They do. They they did teaser trailers back then. Like they came Mm -hmm. out with a teaser and then they came out with a regular trailer. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of trippy because in this, it's funny in when you watch this, like you can tell, like there's no music to it. You just hear the the little sound effects. There's not even color on the lightsabers. Like it's still very early production, like uh, special effects. Like they're you know you'll see some of the ship stuff and things like that, but it like. You don't hear James Earl Jones's voice at all. You know, the, the lightsabers are all still like, I think like white. Mm. And there's no blue or red between Vader and, and Obi-Wan and stuff like that. So it's kind of trippy. But um, so you can kind of watch the way teaser trailers used to look back in the day. Um, and uh, they look like Comic-Con trailers. They're all half done and shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, if they could, they'd have animatics in it, you know. <laughs> right. Um but uh, there was a, there, I found one online that had um, teaser trailers for all seven movies. And uh, of course they did them in, in, in um, episode order. So you saw like episode one, two, and three. Then you saw like the real, like for Star Wars and then Empire. Empire was a little bit better. Return of the Jedi was a little bit better because you actually had some of the score in it, you know. And then, right. and then, of course, you had episode seven, which I was just like, wow, everything looks so fucking different now than it did back then. Because you always had the guy booming voiceover in a galaxy far, far away. May actually this be summer. <laughs> may actually be happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, it's been confirmed. <laughs> it is happening right now. I know. <laughs> we weren't sure, but it is. It's happening right now. Far in the past, you know, because light traveling through space actually takes some time. So we're actually getting it right now because it happened so long ago. This is a live feed. (laughs) From something that (laughs) happened so long ago. (laughs) Right. Because the whole light, you know, traveling through space kind of thing works. Oh, it makes complete sense. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, you'll have the people on the other side going, "Uh, I don't get it. Like. Um, what? what do they mean? Like, you know, coming, what? What? like it happened already, but it's like, we're seeing it now for like the first time. I don't get it. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> <he's saying>. what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> uh. So of course the original star Wars. Um, so I mean, you know, uh, we're changed. We've changed the format of this show and especially for star Wars. Everybody I think has seen it. And if you haven't, what are you doing? Um, 
So it's kind of like you don't really have to go over the story of the movie. Like, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where everybody knows where what has happened in it. So it's just kind of a a, a real discussion on it. And I, I think sometimes, like for me, like Adam and I, obviously, everybody knows there's an age difference between us. Uh, so my impact from Star Wars is a lot more significant in my life than as opposed to Adam, who pretty much grew up watching more Star Trek, you know, being into right. Star Trek than, than anything else. So for me, seeing this movie, I was four years old when this movie came out. And at the, to putting it into context, back at back in the day, I was watching like Star Trek reruns on television. Um, and there was really no, no sci-fi except for like Planet of the Apes reruns. You know, and, and most sci-fi was on television, which was very shitty, very cheap, you know, dialogue was bad. And, and we didn't really get Doctor Who there, Doctor Who here. So, you know, we had none of that. But again, it was all relegated to television. Well, let's be honest. Even though Doctor Who is great, it it wasn't all that great. It was, it was in the same. It was like the best of the shit. Right. From back then. Yeah. Basically. Like if you watched it now and you're not a Doctor Who fan already, you're gonna be like, What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> but and the and the major thing is too is is that Star Trek was gonna have a resurgence. If you listen to our um last episode of uh of uh the away team talked about the child, which was actually the first episode of the new series, which was gonna be Star Trek Phase Two, which was gonna be a new television series. Um for the Star Trek series, bringing back the original crew. The sole reason why that didn't happen and it became Star Trek the motion picture was because of Star Wars. That's why after that you started seeing more theatrical movies, sci-fi movies, because Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, Jaws was, I think, I want to, was it around? It's around the same time. I, I can't remember what year Jaws came out, but Jaws basically redefined a summer blockbuster. Like that, that's the sole reason why we have summer blockbusters now. It wasn't, and back in the day, that was June 20th, 1975. Yeah. Okay. So a year before and keep in mind that they didn't, they expected Jaws to be a, a complete bust, but hit the right time, the right momentum and became a summer blockbuster. And suddenly studio, st studio started thinking, oh, Hey, you know, we can do big budgets like that. But keep in mind, Jaws was expected to be a failure, much like Star Wars was expected to be a failure. And it, but isn't that kind of the way, though? Anytime something comes out that's that's never been done before, people expect it to fuck up. Like, you're like, this... Because the critics, the critics are looking at it going, what the fuck is this? Well, you know what I mean? Like, they it, don't get it. Well, it wasn't even only... It wasn't even solely that. It's because nobody understood this movie. Like, you know, George Lucas came with them. You know, you're dealing with Wookiees and the Force and Darth Vader and, and you know, the Death Star and things like that. And, you know, George Lucas had gone to all these different studios trying to get it made. And uh, Alan Ladd at uh, 20th Century Fox was like, okay, I don't really get it, but, you know, I like your passion, I like your vision, go ahead and do it. And Lucas almost got fired, like, so many times for the um, to do the movie. And he, you know, he was, he became, came up to like the edge of a nervous breakdown, just trying to get the movie made before the studio put the kibosh on it. And, uh, so, you know, is, it's just one of those that just kind of surpassed, like not even, I mean, obviously surpassed ex expectations, but being into the, in, being ingrained in pop culture, you know, it's like. Right. You know, where you get, I mean, even people that walk up to, and I do this, you know, when you walk up to a sliding, you know, those electronic sliding glass doors, kind of do the little hand wave, like a fucking. Oh, like I you, do it. I do it every day because yeah. I need to go through one of those to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of do the hand thing, like you, you know, you're opening the doors using the force and shit like that. Um, I was walking, I was walking through with a buddy of mine and we both did it. <laughs> <laughs> and I did the I did the overhand with the one finger kind of up a little bit. All right. And he did it more underhand. I said, don't think I didn't see that, you Sith motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and he just gave me a glare like, that's right. <laughs> but the, Almost fought right there. Yeah, I know, right? You know, that's, that's, that's throwdown shit right there. <laughs> but see, and the, the thing is, is that you have, you know, some people. And 
think you know you go generations past and you have people that you know grew up on you know grew up watching the prequels or watching um you know the clone wars the anime series or even now rebels um and now it's kind of like oh what's star wars and then now you got the new movies coming in so you know there's a whole new generation that's seen like episode seven and stuff like that that are like holy shit this is awesome and it, it's one of the it it's weird because when you think about it like people are like oh fucking the original star wars that shit was like lame it's like bitch if we didn't have that you wouldn't have this now yeah like that that's really what it comes down to that shit you know dated as it is still had something underneath it that got people on board and that that's really what kind of what keeps it going and, and it's like yeah if you had if you did if star wars wasn't was a failure we wouldn't have any of the shit we have now you know no expanded universe none of that because no one would have given a fuck <laughs> mm-hmm. you know <laughs> so it's like you know it's like before before you do that you know it's like keep in mind if you're watching the new ones you can't have it without the old ones but uh and for me anyway uh you you've seen the you've seen all th- all of the originals or have you still just seen one and two no, i've seen all of them. you've seen all of them. i've seen all the star wars movies um it's just been a while it's been a while since i've seen um five and six mm-hmm. but it's been an even longer while since i've seen one one two and three because mm. one of the things that i think about when i watch this movie and one of the things i think for me really really just kind of makes this movie i think even better than the prequels you know even without the uh without the enhanced special effects and stuff like that is just the acting and the and the chemistry between the cast because yeah given like you know harrison ford mark hamill and carrie fisher the way they interacted together was like they liked each other like they were cool with each other and you know you you really kind of got kind of a camaraderie with them not so much in the prequels like there was no chemistry between um natalie portman and uh hayden christensen like he was supposed to be so in love with her and it's just like you guys really look like you just can't even kind of stand each other well they look like they just met right you know and it's like you know it's that awkward first date you know well we're hanging out with some buddies so you know i guess you can come yeah whatever. yeah exactly it's like going well you know we can hang out but you know my friends are gonna hang out too so we can just kind of make it a group thing and you know, kind of get to know each other. I mean, you're going to let me fuck or what? <laughs> right. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're going to fuck, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear how, how much he hates sand because it's so coarse. <laughs> mm-hmm. What was that? Uh, what was one of those that I sent you about um, uh, Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He said you were, he was a whiny bitch and bitched about sand. <laughs> that he didn't like sand. I think the only the the best thing in the prequels is um what is his name Ewan McGregor or whatever Obi Wan Obi Wan mm-hmm. that his his performance oh was yeah bomb. oh fuck yeah like, he was the embodiment of the younger version from the from the first movies oh yeah it, it was it was to the level of like the new Star Trek movies mm-hmm. where they all they're all doing it their own way but they're still that same exact character yeah you know what i mean like it, it was it was so well done like his anytime he was talking i'd be paying attention as oh, yeah. soon as that other one started talking i'm like ah, whatever dude like <laughs> <laughs> i don't give a fuck yeah and that's the thing like you know you see him and then like that swagger he had when it, when every time he was ready like to throw down like that swagger he had of like that one where he jumped down and he fought um what's his name the the robotic dude oh yeah i think that was in the second one i think right but he just kind of jumps down he's just talking shit the whole time i'm like oh, this- <laughs> This is my hero right here. <laughs> and, and that, you know, so, you know, going with the first one, like, I mean, to be honest, like, I mean, yeah, sometimes, you know, the, the, the hairstyle is kind of dated, but beyond that, the story still stands up. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's one of those movies that it it doesn't lend itself. It's not, um, what is it? it? It doesn't date itself. Well, there's no... There's almost zero references to the 70s. Right. Other than, I would say, Han Solo's hair. Right. The hair of, of Han Solo and Luke yeah. is very, like, you know, that overly quaffed. <laughs> but even that, I mean, that's just, nowadays, that's just, like, beach hair. 
Right. You know what I mean? It's it's not it's not like it's so out of fucking touch. Yeah, it'd be like doing a Star Wars movie now and having a man bun. Like right. You know, it'd be like, like stop. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like no, no, I'm getting up and leaving the theater right now. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, and so it really it lends itself well to being kind of a timeless story. I mean, yeah, you have you know different as far as um. You watched one of the uh, the remastered ones, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's been a while since I've watched the remastered one because the last one I watched was, uh, I th- I'm trying to remember. It was probably, whoa, probably like ten years ago or maybe twelve years ago, where I have this uh, this collector's tin. This is the la- I think the second to last DVD release of one of the remasters because you know each remaster gets different is a little different. Right. But this was one of those that actually included the original version of each of those films, like the unaltered, like you know the way it originally. So I saw, and I was actually kind of sick at the time I was watching. And Star Wars is kind of my go-to sick movie. Like if I'm not feeling well, I'll just you know put it on any one of those, or if you're just watching. TBS or TNT, one of those. But like on Thanksgiving, they just have a marathon of all six movies. Um, the versions, the versions that I have, are I think the second time they remastered it, so it still has, it still has the um, the puppets mm-hmm. or like the the um, practical effects. Oh, those right. are they didn't change any of those. There's no CGI, um, and there's Han still shot first. <laughs> you know, and, and stuff like that. They didn't change any of that. It's just cleaned up. Yeah. Because anyone after that, I don't, I, I don't prefer because that's when fucking Lucas started losing his fucking mind, <laughs> right. changing everything around. Yeah, and so yeah, and and so like watching the original, and I was watching it, and yeah, I mean the film is a little faded or what have you because it's not just not been kept up, and and this was the original cut for those of you that aren't sh- aren't clear. It didn't have episode four in the beginning. Like it was just literally Star Wars. Yeah. And then and mine then, said episode four. Yeah. And episode four didn't come out until they re released it before the um, Empire Strikes Back. And then episode four was was listed on there. Um, but uh, but yeah. So looking at that and even watching the the Blu ray versions, because I have the Blu ray versions too. And um, it's like, the, yeah, the film is, is a little different. But at the same time, it kind of adds an atmosphere to it. It's one of the things I don't like about the cleaned up ones is that, you know, older films, and this could be the cinephile in me that just, that likes some of the, like a little bit of the grit or the dirt, you know, that kind of adds a little, a little bit of an ambiance to the, to the, to the film gives it a little bit of character. I think. Um, See, I mean, I'm kind of the opposite. Like I don't, I don't like over CGI. Right. Um, and I don't like when they start putting CGI where it doesn't belong. <laughs> but I do like it cleaned up and fitting my screen. Well, yeah. You know, I can I can get I can get over get over those kind of things because like, oh, here's a quick way. By the way, I learned this online because I was trying to find out what version I had. If you watch the first Star Wars, whatever version you have, and you want to know if it's the one, if it's one before Lucas started changing everything, if you get to the cantina scene. There'll be a there'll be a, a quick pot where this is dude who looks like a werewolf. Oh yeah, yeah. If you have that, then you're watching an original cut. But because it was re- that dude is completely replaced. Yeah, you, okay. in the uh, in the future ones, What's he's replaced that? with like this weird fucking CGI <laughs> squid thing. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Because that's obviously the version that I have. You know, has yeah. that. But yeah, you know, and and I, th- you know, for me, it, it, when we get it to the get to the cantina scene. It's one of those that, it's one of those movie those shots that like, you know, me growing up, you know, I, I pretty much had, you know, Star Trek was probably the biggest, series, which pretty much everybody looked fucking human, even the Klingons. Everybody looked fucking human unless mm-hmm. they had, you know, paint on their face or one half of their face was black, the other was white and the other person had the opposite sides, you know, uh, or the space hippies, which was on the other night. Um, mm-hmm. you know, that was it. And this is before, obviously the next generation even came on, but you know, it, and it was just, everybody was just a variation of, of, of human. 
So when you get into the cantina scene, you're seeing, you know, the werewolf guys. You obviously see like the astronaut looking guys. But then you see like Hammerhead and you just see like these random creatures. It was a cool little collection of, of these creatures. Even the band, you know, was like, whoa, that's different. That's all different and new and, and all of that. And it, it's just one of those that kind of was like, it was kind of an impact to me because it was just something I hadn't seen ever before that. You know, and of right. course, you know, like the opening shot, of course, is with this, you know, the blockade runner running from off camera over your head and then seeing the, like the length of the Star Destroyer and then the John Williams score kind of booming right there. It's one of those that I really, I, I actually, um, what was it? Uh, was it like just before they released the prequels, they did, um, the special edition Star Wars where they re-released them on VHS and stuff like that. And um, they added some of the extra stuff to it, but they released it in theaters for a short time. I can't remember. It was like the late nineties. Um, and I remember going into the theater, seeing all of them in the theaters again, because again, you know, I was like four years old when I saw this and it was still kind of cool. Cause it's still like, I think a lot of it is, is diminished by watching it on a smaller screen. Even though TV screens are as big as they are, I think when you don't like missing it out on the big screen, you know. It, well, it's it's a whole it's a whole experience, isn't it? It's not it's not just the screen. It's it's the whole surround sound, and you're at the fucking theater, and just all kinds of shit. You know what I mean? It's like it's the perfect way to watch a movie, really. Yeah, especially a movie like especially that. Especially an older one. Especially a movie like that, which is based yeah. on kind of scope and. Yeah, I only go to the theater for big movies now. I've I've noticed. It's too fucking expensive <laughs> yeah. to go to see a fucking comedy. It doesn't make any sense, you know? Yeah. I'll just wait till that comes out. But um, the uh, – I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my friend was making fun of me because he's like, oh, those uh, Star Wars ones, are they 1080p? I said, no, they're 720. And he goes, oh, that's fucking lame. And I go, the movie came out in 1977. <laughs> right. The only reason it's 720 is so it fits the fucking screen. Yeah. It's the only, it doesn't need to be 1080. People oh, are weird. I know. There's going to be a 4K version that comes out. I guarantee it. Oh, well, there's already, 4K. there's already a rumor that there is a, that Disney has a 4K resolution of that. I'm like, how though? It's like, how is that possible? I like how, yeah, they exactly. They recorded that with camera. They recorded that with cameras that still made the, <laughs> no, right. <laughs> They recorded, yeah, they filmed those with cameras that still have hamsters inside spinning the wheels around. You know like, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how are you going to have a 4K resolution of Star Wars? Because I remember hearing that and I'm like, what? Like, and because in the same report, they were like, there's a 4K resolution of Star Wars and there's, you know, possible uh, remastered version of the original pre special edition. Now, if they, okay, the only, the only time I would think that was legit, like, okay to do is if they released it with the newer movies. Like they made a box, a 4K box set, and it had The Force Awakens, Rogue One, and probably, I don't know, the next one. Once the tr the new trilogy is done. So the, those three, and then the two, um, it'd be, it would be two, right? Rogue right. One and uh, the, Han, the Solo. Han Solo movie, the Han right? Solo movie, yeah. Yeah. If that, was, if that was coming out all together, okay, throw some 4K ones in there, might as well. Right, you know, right. so it matches it matches the other ones. But if you're trying to sell me <laughs> just the first movie in 4K, I'm gonna be like, no thanks, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm not I'm not a fucking idiot. But you know what? It's gonna sell like fucking crazy. Oh fuck I'll yeah! I'll tell you yeah. that much. Oh, fuck yeah! People would buy that shit up. Like, oh, I need the 4K version. What? The and then fuck? There'll, be, there'll be people like us that'll be like, but it can't be 4K. Like, there's no way it's 4K. It's literally <laughs> impossible. <laughs> Unless they go back in time <laughs> and replace the camera with a fucking IMAX camera, which, it ain't gonna happen. Which is di which it is Disney, so it's possible they may know something that everybody else doesn't because you know it is fucking Disney after all. Listen, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fucking possible. I'm telling you. Hey, real quick, and I I know we say this a couple times, but I always got to say it when I think about. It. Let's give respect to Disney. For being legit with Marvel, being legit with mm -hmm. with Star Wars, and Pixar they haven't and done them. one thing out of fucking turn. Yeah, with either of these, I remember last podcast, um, the main podcast, we were talking about Star Wars, and um, 
one thing that Steve said struck me kind of kind of well. I, when he what were you saying? You were saying that um, oh about how Rogue One the ending of Rogue One was supposed to be completely different, right? And the only where every one well, spoilers. Fuck you if you haven't seen it. Who cares? <laughs> It's already almost crossed the one billion mark. If you haven't right. seen it yet, you, it's your own damn fault at this point. If you haven't seen it, you live in the woods. You're not listening to this anyway. <laughs> you're writing um, your manifesto right now and sending it to a right. newspaper. <laughs> um, it Kaczynski reference. The original, <laughs> the original ending of Rogue One, everyone lived. Right. But the only reason they wrote that is because they figured Disney wanted a happy ending because it's, it's Star Disney. Wars. And it's Star Wars. Right. And it's Star Wars. But Disney straight up told him at the table, well, do it the way you want to do it. Yeah. And they said, well, we want everyone to die. And Disney's like, well, that's the way you're going to do it then. Yeah. I, you got to give it up, dude. Because oh, yeah. Disney, Disney's one of those companies that could come in and go, you're going to do it this way. Right. And fuck you. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> And honestly, the Rogue One, if everyone lived in Rogue One, it wouldn't have ruined the movie. No. It wouldn't have surprised anyone. I think what really surprised it would have people, been a typical ending, right? Really. And I think what really surprised people is the fact that, like, it surprised me was the fact that nobody fucking lived, and I was kind of like, that was kind of dope, you know? Like, you at know. least if the if the main chick lived, and mm-hmm. then they could have made another movie with her doing something. I don't know, but see, that's just me being Dude, used her to the, everyone her, else living. her living and then being on the run from the empire. Yeah, like some crazy shit. Yeah. You know? But just let her live so you can put her in comic books or in, in books or something like that. You know what oh, I mean? Speaking, but of it's, which, it's... speaking of which, uh, Marvel's going to do a, a Rogue One uh, adaptation like they did with uh, The Force Awakens. That yeah. Force Awakens adaptation was good. Yeah. So I really I'm, enjoyed I'm it. I'm looking forward to the, the Rogue One one. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, and this is kind of, you know, you kind of, you could talk about Star Wars by itself, but at the same time, because of Rogue One, you kind of have to put them together because it's really part one and part two of this. It's kind of, yeah, it's two halves of the same film. Because when you're dealing with uh, Rogue One, um, like, it's it's was touted as a Star Wars story, but it really is part of the trilogy now. It, it's, like, heavily ingrained in that. And, you know, talking with Adam, and we mentioned this on the, uh, on the Tuesday show, um, well, the only reason they're they're saying it's not part of the main line is because it's not it doesn't have any of the Skywalkers in it, right? And because if you really look at it, the main Star Wars movies are, and we said this in the last podcast too, the the main Star Wars movies are are the story of the Skywalker, family. right? The the Skywalker redemption, basically, exactly. And uh, and he, but the thing is, is that with Rogue One, um, when you're dealing with some of the the rewrites and on Tuesday's show. Uh, you know, I the whole Darth Vader sequence was a reshoot, um, because yeah. th- there was there was news at the at the that um, early last year, and everybody was like, oh, freaking out because they figured, oh, Star Wars is gonna suck, it's gonna suck because they're massively reshooting. Well, that was part of it was because like Gareth Edwards said that yeah, there was a totally different ending. Uh, Disney said, well, how do you want to do it? Because they did well, we figured this is what you want. Well, how would you do it? Okay, go for it. And they did it, and it came out great. And uh, as we said on Tuesday's episode, if you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to Tuesday's episode. But um, uh, the editor said that, yeah, the star, the Darth Vader's shining moment was all a reshoot, you know, and which was the fucking baddest fucking, oh, man, that, that part still cracks me. If you, oh, by the way, if you haven't seen the Lego version, somebody went ahead and did a Lego version of that scene shot mm. for shot um actually was really fucking cool because i um uh, somebody at work she she loves star wars and i go have you seen the lego version of that she goes no showed her she goes oh my god it's almost as good as the movie <laughs> and uh it's it's pretty fucking badass but that fucking that scene though everything about it was perfect oh, the yeah. music the it was just it was just like it was I think it reminded you because this is what it did for me. Darth Vader is a character that he looks cool. So throughout my entire life, he's been put on fucking lunch boxes. Mm-hmm. T- so he's the villain, but he's kind of not because everybody likes him. You know, so you get desensitized to the character a little bit. 
he's not scary anymore. Right. And then I'm watching Rogue One, and I see the first scene with Vader in it, and I'm like, yeah, he's a pretty imposing dude. You know, he almost choked that dude out. Yeah. And then he said a one-liner don't, joke. Don't okay. choke on your ambition. Right. And I laughed, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Vader. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, right. Whatever. Oh, and that Vader. That's his new co- get sitcom. To, his new weekly sitcom. Oh, that Vader. <laughs> we get to the end, and. They're in the hallway, and then I hear the breathing, like, oh, shit, Vader's going to fuck these dudes up. And then I didn't say shit until the scene was over. Because (laughs) he fucking murders all those dudes in the thing. Everybody is in almost in tears freaking out in this hallway. They're like, oh my god! Like they're they're. I'm like, oh shit! I forgot. Vader's terrifying. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah because that's the thing. And and when you go into the prequels, like in the original Star Wars movie, you were fearful of him. Like when I watched it as a kid, I was like, oh fuck! You know, like all black, that silhouette, and all of that stuff. You're fucking scared of him. And then Empire was kind of the same way, but with Return of the Jedi. You know, he kind of stuff because now he's Luke's father and now it's that whole redemption thing. And then, of course, you go to the prequels and it it kind of became the pussification of Vader because you knew Anakin. And and for most people, and Anakin's a giant pussy. Oh, fuck. Yeah, dude. Like, like whiny little bitch in that whole thing. And you're just kind of like and then it becomes Darth Vader. And it kind of, I guess, diminishes his impact. So then when you see the other one, you're like. Oh yeah, it's Hayden Christensen. But now you have that moment of showing like, oh fuck, Vader's a badass. And it worked well because if you had been reading the Darth Vader comics coming out of Marvel, which is supposed to be part of canon now, like that comic book, and that's the thing with like Jason Aaron and and, and them, they said that one of the things they really wanted to do was give Vader his balls back. They go remind people that Vader is not a cool guy. Like he is, oh. he's a, he's a fucking menace. And throughout that, throughout that series, you know, he fucking, he murdered people. He took on like an entire rebel force, brought down fucking X-Wings with the force power and shit like that. It's one of those that with that, and then with the scene in Rogue One, now it's like Vader needs his own solo movie. <laughs> like we need to see all of that shit and remind everybody that Vader's a fucking terrifying guy. You know, Vader is about that life. Seriously, thug life to the hilt, man. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't, I don't know. It just, it was crazy to me. It even, it got, and I think what it did, because I've seen the first movies, and I've seen, you know, the movie we're discussing now, and he, he still wasn't scary for me. But I think it's because I was an adult by the time I saw it. Right. You know, so I was kind of, and I already knew who he was. That's the thing about Star Wars, like. Even if you haven't seen Star Wars before, you already know what's going on. Yeah. You know, because it's so ingrained in the culture. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, you know, they got to beat this dude. He's a fucking asshole. Like, I just thought of him as an asshole. Yeah. You know, but this this last thing got me double think. I go I go to <laughs> I go to fucking the store now and I see like a like a kid's thermos with Vader on. I'm like, nah, I don't think we're going to get that one. <laughs> right. Where's the, where's the Rebel Alliance ones at? <laughs> But what's funny too is that, you know, like people will say whatever they want about Vader, but you walk up to someone and just go in the dark and you just go, you stop fucking around. I know, you get that. You're like, oh, yo, stop that shit, man. That ain't funny. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's your problem. You play too fucking much. I'm sick of this. <laughs> I ain't never coming over your house no more. <laughs> yeah. And so it, it's just that kind of thing. But, you know, but then of course, you know, what most people, you know, when you find a, a anti a, a villain like Vader or something like that, sometimes through the culture, you know, people like that one. I mean, you know, there's the the anti hero or you know the villain that becomes well, fucking look at Hannibal, like Silence of the Lambs. Hannibal's become more popular as the villain than anybody else. But I kind of, I kind of never understood it sometimes, like. There's certain villains like I I like the Joker is my favorite villain out of anything. Right. But if he was real, he wouldn't be. <laughs> but right. th- there's there's a lot of people that like if if Vader was real, like oh I'd love to hang out with that dude. I'm like why? So he can kill you? Right. Like I I don't understand the mentality of it. You know what I mean? But to each his own, I guess. Like I, I had someone at um 
<laughs> someone at work once I we were talking it was it was Friday the thirteenth, last Friday. Oh yeah, Friday, yeah. And uh I, I kept going, ch 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 you know, fucking with people. Right. And um it's like, man, that's one of my favorite uh slasher villains. I'm like, yeah, me too. And he's like, um he's like, Yeah, if he was real and that'd be the homie because he could go for I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Right. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> You want some super ghoul to be your fucking homie? Like, the fuck? What have you done in your life that that would be a homie? (laughs) Yeah. Where are you at in your journey? (laughs) You know, (laughs) that has made that okay. That's where you turn around and you being the atheist go, have I told you the story of Jesus Christ? (laughs) Because I I think you need Jesus in your life. (laughs) Have you you read from the the good book? (laughs) That's when you you need it. That's when you know shit's gone too real when the atheist starts (laughs) saying you need religion. (laughs) <laughs> I pissed off somebody the other day because this is real quick because this has nothing to do with Star Wars but um, <laughs> I was like, like oh you must hate religion and I'm like I don't hate religion I did when I was younger but when it was screaming at me all the time I said but now I no, it's each his own man as long as people are happy I'm like well I need religion and, I, and all I said was well there are still a large percentage of people who require some sort of religion because they won't do anything otherwise. Like they need that support system. I didn't mean it as an insult, but she took it as an insult. Of course. <laughs> and she got really fucking mad. <laughs> I was like, oh. She's like, oh, so you're better than everyone because you don't require that. And I'm like, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, know. I didn't say that, but since you brought it up, yes. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing is when she said that, I kind of stopped for a second because I didn't think of it that way. I was like, oh. No, that's not. I guess. <laughs> like I didn't. Did. I didn't mean it as such, but now that you you said it back to me, yeah, I I agree with that statement. I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. Why that? Only that's what I should have said. Well, Only on, better on no, what you should have done. Well, see, on retrospect, looking back on the thing that I had just said <laughs> at that point, while Man. my intention wasn't to be perceived that way, I do stand by that statement in retrospect. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I might have said some some harsh words. That I completely agree with. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> oh man, but that you know, um, I mean, when you when you look at Star Wars, when you look when you look into the the whole the whole structure of it, it is it is a fantasy tale. Uh, it you know it has the the you know it has the swashbuckler, it has the 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 princess, it has the the evil force, you know. Um, and and the the young um what do you call it? the young apprentice that's going on this this hero's journey you know that it, it it really just it fulfills all of that that tale which may which is why it's it's pretty timeless why people can still watch it because it still has a universal tale you know the right. the elder wizard which would be obi-wan you know and and all of that and, and well because it it kind of created that in a modern time right because it, it's it's a very um the it's story the story yeah the story structure of it is very shakespearean you know it, in in the way it's telling you the story you know and which most movies are nowadays it's not i'm not saying it's a direct reflection of a shakespeare play it's just the structure and how the story is told it, and they put that to sci-fi you know what i mean mm-hmm. I hope you know what I mean. I hope somebody knows what I mean. <laughs> um, so it almost gives it a level of legitimacy. Because the sci-fi, like you said before, the sci-fi in the past just fucking let's m- throw a bunch of weird shit in. It's like a horror movie that wasn't scary. Right. Like that's how a lot of sci-fi was back then. Like the fucking, or they were horror movies, like the the giant ants movie and, right, and just right. stupid shit, you know. Yeah. Um, but now it's like, oh, we have this grand scope of a story that the sci-fi really isn't the important part of it. Right. It's, it takes place it's within the a, Yeah, it's, it takes place within a sci-fi realm, but it is a very timeless and classical story. Exactly. And that, and that's kind of I think that's what what gave it so much weight. It's the same thing with um with Lord of the Rings. Yes. When Lord of the Rings came out, when it was written, I'm talking about back in the day. Um it transcended the typical fantasy stuff because it was a it was like a the fantasy realm that it was in. It was a backdrop, you know. The, you were focusing on the characters, you know, and the struggle they were going through. So you know, 
storytelling 101 folks is <laughs> what we're talking about here and and that's just really i mean you know when you in i mean you have like you know the princess being captured the plans be escaped and then it becomes the the imperial search for the plans which ends up in luke's hands who takes obi-wan and you know it's just it's a string of it's a string of events that you know little episodes that pull it into one grand story and then of course it comes into that you know climactic space battle at the end which when you look at it and here's the, here was one of the things like one of the things that i noticed when i was watching it uh especially in here like you know reminder that i'm still watching the 1977 version while the x-wings are heading to the death star or even the millennium falcon and then that tie fighter sequence they still hold up like the original like not enhanced enhances of course made it a little bit they made them more smooth like you know you can see some of the pilots inside them kind of move around a little bit you know but when you look at the originals those are all models and i was watching them and i'm looking at it and i'm like those still hold up like the yeah. visual effects isn't so antiquated that you're just like ugh, you know like if you watched uh one that came one television series that came after this was because of star wars uh about the original battlestar galactica with Richard Hatch and Dirk Benedict. That looks so bad. It, it does. I and, watched a couple episodes. I'm like, oh. Yeah. But I think that's even worse because we have a new Battlestar Galactica. Well, so yeah. if you've seen the new one first, right. you go, oh, let's check the old one out. What the fuck? Because yeah. <laughs> the new one looks amazing. Oh, of course. You know, you know, I mean? you know you're, you're dealing with, you know, what was it, about 20 years ahead of uh, visual effects, all, right. all CG and stuff. And uh, when you're looking at that, like... The visual effects of Star Wars really holds up. Like, you know, when they when they move, yeah, they're a little stilted, they're a little stiff, you know. But, you know, that was the seventies. I mean, you're you have them on strings and this is the and at the same time, that kind of created the visual effects after that. Like, if you ever watch um uh any of the documentaries about Star Wars or or any of uh, of that film or even Empire, all of the stuff they created. There was no motion cap, no motion capture. Like they didn't have, you know, cameras on computer that can do the same motion each and every time. You know, these guys built computers to to make those things. They built an actual trench and had camera on the on the back of a pickup truck right as it's doing a a, a pass and stuff like that. So like, that's pretty fucking amazing when you look at that. Like this is all created because of that. You know, it's like um, uh, what is it? Um, T2, like T2 is responsible for Jurassic Park, which is why we have Jurassic Park is because of T2. Right. You know? And, and the reason we have the prequels was because of T2 Jurassic Park, because the, the visual effects caught up to what Lucas said he wanted to tell. Um, even though it still looked fake as hell. Um, you know, it, it, it's all of these are catalysts and the reason why sci-fi became such a bigger thing. And then, you know, even after this, I mean, James Cameron, uh, What's his name? Uh, fuck. The director of the Lord of the Rings movies. Um, oh, Jax. Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson. Yeah, Peter Jackson. Yeah. And uh, uh, even Spielberg said he, he he learned a lot from, you know, seeing the rough cuts of Star Wars. Because him and George Lucas have been buddies for years. You know, a lot of those big sci-fi directors that came in after that were inspired of Star Wars and saw, wow, you can make that stuff. You can make it well. You can do it good. And... That's really why, you know, it's, well, it's really it's really like any any kind of innovation is you have to have a foundation behind it that that kind of built that built how you think. You know what I mean? Like right. a lot of people say um, that they were inspired by, again, Lord of the Rings and a lot of like World of Warcraft. That's there's, there's another problem. World of Warcraft is the way World of Warcraft is because of Lord of the Rings. Mm hmm. You know, it, and it's it all builds on each other. And a lot of people are like, oh, they fucking copy it. It's like, dude, that's how we, we're moving ahead. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's how it's supposed to work. There's only so many stories you, you get, can do, you know. Exactly. You know. Every once in a while, you get a completely original idea. But it yeah. still has pieces from other things. Right. You know, so. And, I mean, even when you look at the, you look at the characters within Star Wars, when you're looking within the characters of them, you're, you're dealing with, um, and you're dealing with, archetypes that are common you know the hopeful youth which is luke skywalker you know he's learning about the force he becomes the hero of the story it becomes his journey you know uh and which at the time we kind of don't really notice it until empire when 
you know, Vader says, you know, I'm your father and we're watching Luke train to be a Jedi. Um, you know, then you have the heroine who's supposed to be, who's the princess, but usually in most of these stories is kind of the damsel. But, yeah. but in this particular, in this particular incarnation, she's, she's in distress, but she's definitely no damsel. You know, like she, keeps, yeah, she needs help, but she ain't a bitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like she, you know, she's straight G, you know, in this whole thing where even with their facing the, you know, destruction of her planet, she still keeps it real and doesn't yep. give up, doesn't give up the shit. You know, snitches get stitches basically is That's what she's, right. is what Leia's trying to say, you know? And so basically Leia's a fucking G seriously. is what we're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I know. What we're trying to say is she's like, you know, she's, how did you, how did you phrase it? Um, G up from the knees up. That's right. <laughs> and uh, and then of course you have who's supposed to be the swashbuckler, which would be Han, who is a little bit of more of the comic relief. You know, he's like because you have the droids, you have R two and three PO, which are kind of the the um, how do you call it? Like in the in the classic ones, they would always have the um, the storytellers of the story. And it's it's yeah. kind of it's kind of told through their eyes because the way we follow the way them. I I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just gonna say is this because through the story from where we start to where we end, we're following them, the droids, right. and they're kind of the they're kind of the comic relief for the children, and then you have Han who is a little more of the comic relief for the adults. Who I go ahead. I've always seen it this way. Mm-hmm. The droids are comic relief. I agree with that. But I, when we're talking about the trinity of of Han Solo, Leia, and um, Luke, Luke's the I, the idealistic one. Mm -hmm. He's the one that is never going to think things are all falling apart. Right. He, he's morale. Um, Leia is the one that is pushing the fucking story along because she's like, we have to do this and this. Like, it needs to be done. I don't fucking care how it's going to be done. It needs to be done. So let's do it. And Han's that character that's in almost every action, sci-fi, fantasy movie, whatever, that's saying what the audience thinks. Right. Like, what the audience, most people in the audience would say if they were in that situation. Like, we're fucked. Right. <laughs> like, a perfect a perfect um, representation of that is when Luke is um, practicing um, with that floating, I forget the name, but the, the um, training. Mm-hmm droid thing and he has to go Obi-Wan tells him to close his eyes just the fourth and Han's back there going this is all nonsense right because that's what everyone thinks right. when, when they see something like that like it's like this is fucking ridiculous so he's like the he's the oh, he's the cynic he's, he's the cynic he's the realistic one he's the one that most people who are watching the movie would think yeah well yeah there's the the, the classic line in there where he's like um, uh, what does he say he goes in my biz, in my business, there's just such thing as luck. And exactly. Like, Look, you know, good against remotes is one thing, but good against, you know, but nothing takes away from having a good blaster at your side, you know, because he's more of, you know, what he can see, what he can touch. You know, Luke is the he's grounded. Yeah, basically. Luke is the idealist that goes into college, and Han is what comes out of college, the cynic. <laughs> you know, the right. This is how everything and Leia up. and Leia is the professor. Right. And, and I think that's a perfect a perfect way to put it. That's how I have I've always seen it anyway. Is that Han Han would be me, not that I'm that fucking cool. But I mean in in how he But you see yourself as that fucking cool. Right. Like Han still <laughs> does things, but he always <laughs> wants to make it like fuck this shit. But right. he's still going to do it. You right. know what I mean? Well, um well like the the other perfect the the perfect antithesis uh, the perfect representation of that was when Han got his reward. Right. And Luke is like you just got your reward and just leaving then? He's like, yeah, I got stuff to do with this. He's like, you know, this, this is a suicide mission. This isn't something heroic, you know, and which it is. I mean, you know, you got those guys going to go that the odds of them winning are pretty fucking remote. So that would be what all of us would be like. Well, that's just a fucking suicide mission. I'm not doing that, you know, but Luke, they, Luke is almost I I'm thinking about now. Luke is almost the character that everyone wishes they could be. Yeah, because he's so positive. He's so. He, he always pulls it off. You know what they I mean? Wish, they wish they could be that positive and that, uh, that unself, that, uh, selflessness. 
Right, but yeah. then you relate to Han. Yeah, because then you're like, but Han, what, but but Han that, keeps it real. <laughs> right, but in that analogy, what would Leia be? So if everyone wants to be Luke, but everyone is Han, what is Leia? Leia would be the... Well, the thing with Leia is she's more of the... Uh, so Leia's Leia, motherfucker. Well, yeah, I mean, you can't really put a, a label on her. But she, you know, I think in that same aspect, you know, she's what's guiding... She's the what's guiding the story. So, like, she says, we need to destroy the Death Star. Um, she's almost the narrator the, of the story in a lot of respects. Yeah, I mean, you know, her actions do narrate the story. But, like, she's the... Here it is. She's the objective. And then you have the two sides. Which side are you on? Like, we need to destroy the Death Star. Luke is on that side. Han is like, uh, yeah, I'd like to destroy the Death Star, but I also like to breathe, too, you know? Right. You know, she's she's the objective, and then they're the two sides of your brain that are like, well, it is a noble thing. And that's one of the things that I think Rogue One kind of does well and kind of translates it into, into Star Wars is that whole concept of bigger than themselves, the rebellion to stand up against the empire is something bigger than themselves. Cause that's what that came up a lot when they were, you know, like when, um, uh, Jane was trying to convince the, the rebel fleet to attack, to get those plans. They were talking about something bigger than themselves. And here Luke is doing the same thing. Luke is going into something that's bigger than himself. And Han is like, right. yeah, nah, <laughs> you know, I, I see what you're doing there, but, uh, you know, I got shit to do. I got money. Well, <laughs> I got money, honey. Uh, Leia is the biggest hero of all the movies, though, because she stays consistent. She's right. the most consistent one. Because, and, and you see that mostly in Force Awakens. We get to Force Awakens, and Princess Leia is now general. Right. Right. Because she's G. Han's, right. Han's back to fucking smuggling. And Luke's hiding on an island somewhere, pouting. Right. You know, so it's like the only one who kept it G the entire fucking time <laughs> was Leia. Well, that's one of the things that I uh, that I truly loved about the Leia character, because when you go over the 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 the, the arc of the trilogy, uh, Luke goes from that that idealistic young kid to a more seasoned character. Like he has a story arc in that whole thing. You know, going from you know you know, being like, I want to be a Jedi like my father to being a Jedi. So you see him mature through those three movies. Han, you see soften in those three movies. Like he's, you know, he, he's in love with Leia. He sacrifices himself and then, you know, you know, does the thing for the, um, for the rebellion and stuff like that. So he kind of softens a little. Han has probably the weakest story arc of the three, but with Leia, Leia's dynamic actually stayed pretty fucking strong because here she comes as a strong independent woman then you have her fall in love with Han in the second one but at the same time it never weakened her character like it never because she because she, she fell just in love lifted with, him up right she lift she was so strong she lifted him up to see the the greater good but at the same time because you know usually when you have like the strong character who falls for someone they become they basically fall into that stereotype of, yeah, I'm in love, you know, but, you know, she stayed strong. Like she knew what she had to do, but it didn't weaken her at all. Like when you, especially when you go into uh, Return of the Jedi, like she pretends to be a bounty hunter to, to get Han out of there, you know, and she's like, you know, and he's like, who are you? And he's like someone who loves you. And then like, let's get the hell out of here. Then of course you see her in that gold bikini and then, you know, all bets are off. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> but I think too, and this is one thing that that I I'm curious. I don't worry about, but I'm curious about with the solo, um, the solo Han Solo movie. <laughs> um, his character, out of all out of all three of them, his character is is the most dependent on the people that are around him. Yeah, I think because yeah. he's, and I'm not saying he's a bad character, but he's the more one dimensional one. Yeah, in the beginning. But we're going before the beginning, so you can, you can only assume that he's the same way. Because when you see him at the tape, like perfect perfect thing is his introduction. So in in the in the first movie, fourth episode, um, when he's talking to, to 
uh, Greedo. Is it Greedo or Guido? Greedo. Guido. Greedo. Yeah. I always want. I always <laughs> want to say Greedo. <laughs> it's fucking Guido. Um, he's like a super badass, and you're like, oh, this motherfucker. Like he's he's like that. He's like that fucking um, that anti-hero cowboy yeah. type dude. Oh, exactly. But yeah. that's but you can already tell just in that scene that's it. Yeah. Like he's he's not he's not going past that. He goes past that because of Leia and because of Luke and the influences of those two characters. So I'm curious as to how he's going to be in that movie coming up. Yeah. Like I mean, of course it's an origin story, so we're gonna get a lot more depth and I'm sure the movie's gonna be fucking amazing. But it's just I'm just curious about it. Yeah, and that's the thing, is it's like, you know I wouldn't mind seeing a solo Leia movie before um it's too soon though, of course, well, yeah. right now. But um showing her times on um, Alderaan, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But that would just kind of be a Royal movie. It really, right. I don't know. You know what I mean? There wouldn't be too much in space stuff. I think she was always just on that planet. I would really, I really would like to see a, um, uh, a solo Vader movie, which I think would just be ultimately badass. Um, but I would also love to see it, a solo Obi-Wan movie with you and McGregor playing Obi-Wan again. Yeah. That would be pretty fucking dope. Um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, her character among everything is just, has always been really, really strong. And I think what makes that dynamic work, especially in star Wars is the fact that they all don't see eye to eye, you know, Leia has, this is the mission. This is what needs to happen. We need to do this. Han is like, yo, chill. Okay. You know, you know, we, we got some, you know, I'm, I'm good. And she's like, really, you know, like that whole scene where he's like, you know, not a bad bit of rescue. And she's like, you know, they let us go. You know, it's like, you know, they allowed us to get out of there. And he's like, you know, kind of, he's taking like a personal front, like, what, you don't think I'm that good? And she's like, no, I don't. <laughs> you know, <It's> like, <laughs> no, I really fucking don't. <laughs> you know, it's like, it keeps it that real, you know? And, um, and I, I think that's what really kind of makes this, this story work so well, because you do have that, you know, positive role model for girls. That's why a lot of, you know, girls wanted to be Leia because Leia was the kind of girl that a lot of them wanted to be the strong, independent, you know, wasn't that just wait until a man shows up. Right. Exactly. You know, um, well, there's that, the, that, the, the signifying moment in that is the way she talked to Vader, you know, like, and, and Tarkin, you know, that just, you know, fuck, fuck you. you. Fuck like you. That, yeah. Yeah. What are you going to try to do? Scare me? You know? <laughs> but she didn't do it. And the thing, and the thing that I, and we see this in a lot of movies nowadays too, where every time they have a female stand up for herself, it's always in a whiny, yeah. just like, I don't want to do it. Like right. that kind of shit. And that's not, no one wants to be that. Right. Like in, in, in the original Star Wars, Leia was like, no. I'm not fucking doing it. Yeah. You can kiss my fucking ass. Right. You know, she was like a, you know, she stood up like the male character. She yeah. had no problem. And she, when, was, she was less of a bitch than Luke. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I know. And like the, in the escape from um, the holding cell where they're like, you know, where she's over there bitching like, you know, like, well, when you came in here, did you have a plan for getting out? And then Han's like, well, you know, he's the brains, you know, pointing it at Luke. And then she just grabs Luke's gun, shoots across there and then shoots, you know, that the hole into the um, trash compactor. Like in a dress. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and she's just like, you know, you know, all right, fuck it. Let's do this. You know, I, I got a solution for you, you know? So, you know, it really kind of, it does show her as being able to, you know, think on her feet, you know, the, I, the idealist, the idealistic way of being, you know, I guess you could say feminist, you know, because she's strong. She's, you know, beautiful, but she don't take shit from anyone. She knows what, her, you know, but she's also not afraid to be happy, to, you know, fall in love and things like that, which doesn't weaken her. And I, I before feminism got weird. <laughs> right. Or if you're a feminist, you can't, you know, you can't do this. You can't fall into that, you know, or, or what have you. But, you know, that that's one of the things that I think why the original Star Wars films resonate so strongly and why it's still still pretty fucking relevant. Yeah. In these difficult times. And these and these struggles right. that we go through every day. <laughs> Speaking of feminism, I saw a video the other day. This woman said that she was tired of just existing to be a baby factory for men and that she would prefer a society of just women where they just kept a small amount of men for breeding. And I go, 
Isn't that the mascara? But, uh, no, because the <laughs> mascara, they, they don't breed. Oh, yeah, so I'm okay. sitting there going, I'm like, but, but biology inbreeding and what? <laughs> like, I was like, I don't get it. And, and then, um, I said, we could have an idealistic society if that woman didn't exist in it. <laughs> right. But you know, right. some people just take shit too far. Oh yeah. It's on it. You know, it's, it's with anything, but yeah. anyway. All right. Well, I think that is probably it for this episode. You think? Yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, please rate and review the show. Uh, please review us on iTunes, the Lazy Geeks Network, and it'll help us immensely. And if you want to catch our back catalog, you can check it out on Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, as well as our website, thelazygeeks.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash thelazygeeks, or search us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat by searching the Lazy Geeks one word. And you can find links to all our social media hubs through our website, thelazygeeks.com. And you can find me on the interwebs, on Twitter at a middle age geek, Instagram middle age underscore geek, or my blog themiddleagegeek.com, which I have already posted a new blog. Uh, at this time, it should be two blog posts, this, and I'm going to try to do two a week on that. Um, so definitely check it out. What about you, sir? I am on Twitter at sapientlg. One of my New Year's resolutions was to use Twitter more often. <laughs> How's that working out for sit, you? <laughs> I sit there and stare at it and go, what what, what do I have to say? <laughs> right. You don't have you to know, say I, anything. You just say whatever you want. Well, it's the, weird, the, it's the weirdest thing. So I was talking to my wife about it, and I'm like, I don't have anything to say to anybody. And my wife goes, uh, babe, you always have something to say. <laughs> right. You're just not remembering it when you open Twitter. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> so I think that's the thing. I need to remember Twitter's there. So when I think of something, go back. <laughs> Right, exactly. Typing out. <laughs> um, I was I was using Twitter like I would sit down at my computer at night and go, "No, I should go to Twitter and post something." But right. then I'm not doing anything, so I'm just like, "Uh." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so that is it for this month's edition of the Cheap Seats. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. Shut up! The trailers are on. This has been a production of the Lazy Geeks Network, available only at thelazygeeks.com. Goodbye.